60 to 61,000 right there. That again, to me, is going to be the first big test for Bitcoin. Um, if it can't get above there and it starts to fall back down, Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway breaks down the charts and macro data like nothing ever available to the public. Usually kept for institutions, Gareth reveals tactics, trade levels, and analysis that will blow your mind and make you a better investor slash trader. He covers stocks, commodities, and crypto, and will walk you through everything you need for the day to be a winning trader and investor. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. You can see the initial reaction. Why did the market spike on the initial reaction? And the answer is very simple. We saw CPI month over month coming in at a negative number, a negative 0.1%. All right, that was versus expectations of 0.1%. Now, this shows a little bit of deflation on that month over month number. I wouldn't make too much out of it. It's not like we're entering deflation yet, but nonetheless, it is much better than expected. Remember, Less a lower number means less inflation. In this case, a small decline in inflation. CPI year over year, 3.0%. It was expected to be 3.1%. So again, that was better than expected on the headline year over year number. So both of these numbers initially were positive and they are positive. Look at the markets react initially to the upside, but look at this. It's starting to sell and I have a hypothesis on this. So my thinking is this, remember yesterday, let's zoom back and rewind to yesterday. Yesterday, we saw the markets have a pretty momentous move to the upside. And part of it was the 10-year bond auction went over off pretty well. Part of it was that Jerome Powell didn't say anything hugely negative. He even talked about potentially lowering rates. But my suspicion is that people knew, certain people knew, that this number was going to come in better than expected and that's why the markets were up so much yesterday on the day all right just my suspicion but i think we all know that when you have a group out there that knows these numbers ahead of time it's very hard for them not to say something to someone else who then says something to someone else and before you know it it spreads like a wildfire out there especially within the institutional group all right now the last number to look at jobless claims this morning, 222,000 versus 236,000 expected. So actually this number was a little stronger than you would have anticipated. And in that case, that's kind of a mixed bag, right? Because if we start to see the jobs data getting better, it makes it harder for the, the Federal Reserve to cut rates. Now, having spoken about rates, let's take a look at the Fed watch tool. And by the way, this is available on our website, verifiedinvesting.com. You can scroll to the bottom. We have so much data you literally need to scroll down that website and just look at it we from heat maps to economic news to earnings news you name it it's there including this which is the fed watch tool now the fed watch tool tells us basically where we're likely to get a federal reserve rate cut and what we can clearly see here is that right now it's pricing in with almost certainty this is about as high as you're going to get 78% chance that in September, notice here, over here, you can see September 18th is, the, is that meeting. That is going to be the first rate cut. And I think today's economic data comp comp uh, compiled with what Jerome Powell said yesterday and the day before on his testimony that he was anticipating cutting rates because the data was getting better for inflation is exactly what we're seeing here. Now, the question will be is, do we see another cut? Because remember, if you go back a month or two, the market was only pricing in one rate cut this entire year. However, look at this. Here's November's meeting. Here's December's meeting. And look, between those two meetings, it is favoring a rate cut. So it looks like the markets right now are pricing in one more rate cut this year to make it two on the year. And again, we are getting closer and closer to that end of year period. So that again is something to watch. Now, what's interesting here is if we look at January, January is pricing in another rate cut. So this is a combination of slightly better inflation, but also remember, and this is something Jerome Powell did mention in his testimony, he is concerned about the jobs market. Now, the jobs market numbers I've been talking about for the last three months and saying, guys, there is something going on here. Why have I been seeing that when we've seen gains in jobs 
every single month. I mean, even this last month, 206,000 jobs were gained. Why is Jerome Powell concerned? Why was I concerned three months ago? And the answer is, look at U6, which is underemployment. Underemployment over 7% now. That's been consistently rising. If you look at the jobs numbers, where is the full-time jobs versus part-time? We've seen full-time jobs coming down and more full-time jobs being lost while part-time jobs are going up. It means people aren't finding full-time jobs, so they're having to take one, two, three, three part-time jobs to make ends meet. These are all signs of rot in the underbelly of the jobs market. So again, those little things, now Jerome Powell starting to just basically talk about it ever so slightly, but you guys have been privy to this information ahead of time. And again, my goal here at Verified Investing is to go inside of the data, not just what the mainstream media reports, remember this, but it's ultimately going underneath the stuff that you're not getting from headline media or even on social media as much. I want to give you guys that information so you're at least aware. What you do with it is your prerogative. I just give you that information. What happens during earnings season is big moving action. Take a look at Delta Airlines. Look at this drop on Delta. All right, so here's your big drop on Delta. It's down about, I think, 8 to 9%, which for Delta, that is a big move. Now, this is the key. What do they say? Well, they basically said their costs are going up, and the amount of people that are flying, or essentially the money they're making, fares are, are actually going down because they have to lure people in to fly. Now, everything we've been hearing prior is like, oh man, you know, every plane is booked, everything is like going crazy, travel is still so robust. But then again, remember last quarter when Expedia reported earnings and the stock dropped like 30% in a day because travel was starting to struggle? Now we're seeing an airlines talking a little bit about that. Now, I want to talk about a level here. The level here was 42.25, and I'm going to show you how you come up with this level. And this is a level that was released in the Earnings Trader here. That's a new service that focuses just on the earnings reports in the after hours and in the pre-market. But what I, what I want to show you here, folks, is check this out. So if we look at this, we can clearly see that there's a trend line right here that goes right through these pivot points, right? And you can even stretch it back even a little bit further. But just to focus on this, Look at this, right? So you have this here, you have this high, so you could really extend it right there. Here, here, and then look at how it kind of bubbled up right here and then broke out. So that's telling you that's a big level. Well, what price is that at? It's around 42.20, 42.15. Okay, so that's a first level. That's actually about 42.25. But now, what do we want? We want multiple factors. It's something that I preach to you. It's like, okay, one factor is great. That probably puts you in the mode for... I don't know, 60% success rate. So better than 50, 50, 60, 60 is okay. If you're a trader and you're doing 60%, you're, you're solid. You're not amazing, but you're solid. Now, what about a secondary factor? Well, let's take a look. What if we take a Fibonacci and we do a low from here to the high from here? So this is really the beginning of a bull move, right? Up, 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 and now you're correcting. So let's find out what that Fibonacci level would be. And let's see if it matches up. And this is the beauty of it, right? Look at this, guys. So if we draw this Fib out, where do you guys see the 50% Fib level come in? Right here. There's your 50%, and look, it literally lines up almost to the penny with that line there. So now you have two factors, two factors on a trade that gives you an earnings level, right? So let's go back to the pre-market, and let's see. So remember, the level was 42.25 approximately, give or take. And what we'll do is we'll bring over the 10-minute chart and look at where that white line is, which, remember, was the Fibonacci 50% retrace as well, and look at where pre-market it went. Boom. Again, listen, does it always work out perfectly? No, earnings are notoriously very volatile. But the key is notice how it's not just one factor, it's two factors. If you can find a third factor, it raises your probability of success. From this level, it bounced all the way back to 43.75. That's about a dollar 50 gain on this. That's amazing. Now listen, I'm going to be the first to tell you is once you hit this level and bounce, there's no guarantees if you come back to it again, you're going to bounce. I don't rebuy the same level again in this scenario. It honestly could go lower. 
So we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is inching up just a little bit here. Nothing crazy on Bitcoin. I was a little disappointed in the price action yesterday. I still think it could get to that 60 to 61,000 level. Notice again the convergence of these two trend lines, this little bottom right here in white. That again is going to be key resistance. And if we just flip and zoom into that, I just like to show it a little bit closer to you guys. But right here, right? So this was your hit of support. You got a nice bounce. We're now in chopping sideways. We're starting to move up. But look again at this zone right here, 60 to 61,000 right there. That again, to me, is going to be the first big test for Bitcoin. Um, if it can't get above there and it starts to fall back down, I would expect the 52,000 level to give way. And then you're talking 49,000 on the chart. Looking at gold real quick, look at gold take off today, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, in smart money commodities, we've had a bunch of winners, but I did take one loss. I stopped out of gold here. I was short gold. And once we confirmed and got this retrace, I exited because the chart told me to do so. Took a 0.75, or I think it was 0.74% loss. And the idea is that, again, in that situation, that was the right move. The chart told me that it was going to go up exit the trade and sure enough it has gone up and it's, we're, we're heading towards this double top. Based on the data here, it's very possible we could be getting ready for our next bull move on gold to $2,500 an ounce, which by the way, when we came into January and it was trading basically around $2,000, I said by year end, $2,500 and change is going to be your target and it's looking more and more likely here on gold. All right, quickly over to silver. Silver looking good as well, short term higher high, and look for this double top of resistance at 3250. Now, silver's a little trickier because it's also an industrial metal. So, if we start to see really weakening economic data, that could be a problem. But either way, you'll have a resistance at 3250. If it can get through there, I honestly think 37 is a very fair opportunity just in the next month or two. Um, where silver could ultimately go. All right, next up, let's take a look at oil. Oil's falling today. You guys know I've been kind of guiding you through on this chart. I told you up here, look for a pullback. Where was support? Right here, basically taking this and your flat bottom right there. It kind of came down, kissed it, got a bounce yesterday. Now it's starting to trade down. My guess is based on charts, what should happen if you look at a thousand of these charts, you get these little bounces and then price will break down to the next level. Where's the next level? Flat top right there, that'll be your next level. I think it's around 78-ish, give or take. Um, small bounce again, maybe back to the scene of the crime right here, and then your bigger flush will come in. And my guess is, again, the downside on oil is you got the hedge funds to alleviate their short position, so now you have a balanced market, back to normal market. That's what drove price up. Now the economic news out of China, out of the U.S. will start to take over and price will do what the, the macro data tells us, which is likely drive price to the downside. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.